Hey guys, it's Dr. Lynn, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be revisiting the old trusted treatment of TCA for ice pick scars. So this whole video will be dedicated as to how to treat ice pick scarring. It's an update, I've done many videos even going back as six, seven years ago. However, since then there's been many publications that we have done, including uh, some that we've published in the last one or two years in regards to ice pick scar treatment. So ice pick scars are very common scars. They're very deep scars and they're very narrow scars. They're usually seen in smokers and they're common both in males and females, especially if you smoke. So above all, if you smoke and you still have active acne, cut it out because you can be predisposed to ice pick scarring. Ice pick scarring, contrary to popular belief, is not hard to treat. All it requires are accurate treatments, frequent treatments and persistence and above all control of the acne. So these are very different scars compared to rolling scars, which are undulating scars, which may require surgery, something like subcision or dermal fillers. And they're different compared to box scar scars, which are broad scars that may not be as deep. So there are many scars in between all of these ranges that's known as the Jacob classification of scarring. And they include things like polymorphic scars, saucer scars, hypopigmented scars, and things like bridging scars, hypertrophic scars, etc. So today's video will be concentrating on those narrow scars which go deep into the skin. So like I said, treatments are not hard. Let's divide it into three things. Peels, surgical, and lasers. So of all the treatments, peels are probably the most cost effective because when you look at a TCA or even things like phenylcrotin oil, it doesn't cost much to actually buy and it's relatively easy to apply. Obviously, this is not a DIY video. If you have a DIY video, I think I've done some of this stuff elsewhere, but not for TCA Cross because that could be a little bit dangerous at home. So what we do is that TCA cross can be delivered using three main mechanisms. The first one is using a toothpick and this was published many years ago by Korean dermatologists. And what we do is we use a toothpick, we dip it in the acid, the acid varies between 70 to 100%. It could be something like TCA or trichloroacetic acid, or it can be something like phenylcrotin or phenylcrotin oil. And then we actually place it precisely in the actual scar itself. Generally speaking, that requires between three to six treatments, depending on the depth of your scar and also your skin type, but also the application technique, um, the frequency, and also uh, the concentration of the TCA. So that's the first thing is the actual TCA cross. About 10 years ago, I started using a syringe. The syringe is not to actually inject, but the syringe is designed to drop the actual TCA precisely into the ice pick scar itself. And most recently, uh, we published something called TCA Paint, which is to use an undyed paintbrush, a very fine undyed paintbrush. And that's a faster technique compared to the cross using a toothpick and more precise compared to something like um, a syringe delivery. So the TCA Paint is a novel solution. Once again, you still require between three to six treatments for optimal outcomes. The great thing about this is cost effective because it takes the dermatologist or the plastic surgeon out of the picture because in most situations uh, cosmetic physicians or even nurses can actually deliver this treatment safely and effectively. So those covered the peels. Secondly, surgery. Surgery is actually pretty easy. If your scars are narrow, we can punch them out. So it's a new publication coming out in the next six months where I actually punch out these scars using specific um, size punches and they can range something like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 mils where I repurpose FUE instruments or as big as something like 1.5 or 2 mil. Once we go past 1.5 mil, we probably need to use a suture there. But anything below that, we've shown it quite eloquently in many before and afters. You don't need to actually suture these um, uh, surgical defects. So surgery is an option. The great thing about surgery is that you can get the majority of scars out in the one session. The downside about it is probably the cost because when that happens, you probably have to have a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon be involved in your treatment. So the costs go up, but the great thing is that the majority of scars, provided they're not too close together, can be removed in one session. Now the third thing is with laser. Now lasers, generally speaking, if you use fully ablative laser resurfacing, it probably won't treat your ice pick scars because the bottom level of your scars are out of reach or out of safe reach from your erbium or CO2 lasers. What you could do is you can use a small spot. 
For example, Dr. Mark Taylor uses an erbium laser. I personally like using a CO2 laser. You still need to have specific laser equipment where the spot size is between 0.75 to about 1.2 mil. That way you can deliver the beam precisely into the hole itself of the ice pick scar and that basically ablates the scar. The advantage of laser over peels is that lasers require far less treatments between one to three sessions depending on the extent of scarring and your immune response. So generally speaking, lasers can work well provided you have the right laser and the right technique. So at the end of the day, be guided by your physician as to the best treatments for ice pick scars. So guys, I hope you liked that quick summary. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.